welcome to The Beauty Dish. Thank you for joining me for another installment of The Foundation File. Today I'm reviewing Givenchy Photo Perfection Fluid Foundation. And this is the product that you guys voted for on Instagram. I put up a post asking if you wanted to see the Givenchy or the Buxom next and the new Buxom Foundation. And there was an overwhelming demand to see a review of the Givenchy, which is great because I was really curious about it. So if this is your first time watching the Foundation Files, it's an ongoing series that I do where I review one foundation and I show you how I put it on in a demo and I put it up to my new foundation rating system so that we can see all these foundations sort of on a, on a standard scale um, rated along the same criteria. These aren't first impression reviews. I wear the foundation all day at least three times before I put it on for you and do my final review. Okay, let's talk about the Givenchy. First of all, let's address what to me is a bit of an elephant in the room and that is the insistence that Givenchy had on doing a funky spelling for their foundation. So I'm putting it right here. Um, photo apostrophe perfection spelled wrong. I don't understand what that's supposed to convey if it's supposed to make it cooler or funkier or to show that it's like outside the box. I don't know but I find that a little silly. It will not affect my rating. So this foundation um, in, in their language on the Sephora website they claim that it's a flawless coverage of course and that it will blur your imperfections with the speed and the power of a digital retoucher. So it's like, you know, putting this on is like photoshopping your skin. Now that's great, but when you talk about, you know, digital retouching, I think of doing that for photographs. You don't retouch actual film, you know, like a movie or something, at least not, I mean, you probably do, but it's mostly something that you think of with photography. And here's the thing, the Givenchy Foundation has an SPF of 20 and the chemicals that give you the SPF are titanium dioxide and octanoxate. Titanium dioxide is a mineral and it's one that a lot of people blame for causing flashback in pictures. So this, I'm thinking that, they're, that this is supposed to be more of an HD foundation, but they're not calling it an HD foundation. And just, you know, to define that term, an HD foundation is something that looks perfect on camera, on film. So in that case, you're not going to have a flashback issue. Photography is a different thing. So what is this foundation really supposed to be? They don't really say that. I'm interpreting it that they wanted to create an HD foundation with SPF, but don't look at their language and think that this is perfect for photography because it probably isn't. Now, let's say that you are not planning on shooting films or taking lots of flash pictures or, uh, well, maybe you're, maybe you're on YouTube, maybe you are shooting film. In that case, this should be fine. But let's kind of get past all that and talk about how it works just as a foundation on your face. Okay. So I've got some of the language from their description and they say something interesting. They say that this foundation works like a concealer. It corrects imperfections, it smooths texture, it conceals darkness and sallowness and leaves you flawless. In fact, right on the bottle it says zero flaw, like the number zero, zero flaw, which is another interesting way to play with language, whatever. Okay, so. It does not specify if this is light, medium, or full coverage. By, by the language saying that it works like a concealer, I'm, I'm hearing medium to full coverage, or very good coverage, or kind of a perfecting type of a product. So does it do that? Um, not quite. It's not full coverage. It is a very natural finish. In fact, it seems to me to work like a good HD foundation. It reminds me of the gold standard, the Makeup Forever HD Foundation, which does not, by the way, contain SPF. Okay. So far we've talked about it, some kind of negative or mixed things about this foundation, so here's one really good thing about it. It has a really good and interesting shade range. There are 12 shades total, but they make shades for different undertones. So on the website they will specify if it's for light neutral, light with pink undertones, light with um, like beigey pink undertones, medium, medium with pink undertones, medium with yellow undertones, etc. So I didn't say all of them, but 
there's, they're trying to do something for everyone, although I do see some gaps. The point is, this foundation does come in different undertones. It's not, you know, like some of the NARS foundations where everything is just like so much yellow or actually I tried to get, I really wanted to do a review of the Guerlain Lingerie de Poe and the sales associate told me that so much of the colors are pink undertones that she just couldn't match me. She couldn't even come close. And I was like, really? Really? <laughs> It was almost like I felt discriminated against, which I'm, I'm kidding, that's total hyperbole, but it was like, come on, you know, come on. But I'm sure people with pink undertones have felt the same way at times. So, but this foundation has an array of undertones, so at least you might have a chance of finding one that really is a good match for you. Okay, now I'm going to go to the demo and you will learn more about how this foundation works on the face and then we'll do the rating system. I found that the best way to apply this foundation is with my new Sedona Lace foundation brush and it is the FB07. It's a flat top synthetic foundation brush and I am loving it. Loving it! And alright, if you've seen my previous foundation videos or seen me apply foundation in any video, I always preach about how much I like to use my fingers and I think I've just read like one too many interviews with Pat McGrath where she kind of talks poetically about how awesome it is to use your fingers to blend makeup into the pores and and you know that's true <laughs> sometimes. Let's see I'm about to continue talking about the brush but why don't I talk about the foundation. So I'm just buffing it in and this is the 105 color. I just dotted it on my face and I just kind of go to town. I go everywhere and I try to get it under my eyes because I like how it evens out my skin there. That was my brush just knocking against the mirror because I'm trying to get close. So this foundation really does go on quickly and I think that is a function of the foundation as well as the brush. I think it gives me a really natural finish. So in my mind, finishes can be either dewy, matte, or natural. And natural is the kind of skin-like kind of there's no there's no finish to it that that isn't I don't know as as deceptively skin like as possible okay so that is largely it for one coat and I would say this is a solid medium coverage I mean do you agree like I can still see I can see my skin and my freckles and pigmentation but I shouldn't say pigmentation I can see my dark freckles but it's it's natural. It's that whole kind of HD foundation idea, I think, and it does remind me a lot of the Makeup Forever HD foundation. Okay, I like this level of coverage. I think it's medium, and I would just stop here, but I have tried it to see if it's buildable, and I'm going to add sort of another layer on this side of my face so you can see the difference. Okay, so can you see the difference between this side of my face with the extra layer of foundation versus this side? I can definitely see the difference. I see more more freckling and less evenness in color on this side than I do over here. And I actually think it looks really nice. I mean, I, I don't know what you consider full coverage. I think this is approaching full coverage. And I think it looks nice and it feels nice and it doesn't look any thicker or heavier than this side, but it does have a, a smoother a uniform color and tone, if you will. Okay, so now what I've got on my skin besides the foundation is a very, very light amount of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in uh, Dim, and I really just have that on my nose, right around the center there. A little on my forehead, too. And then I have quite a bit of bronzer, actually. I even did a little contouring, and then I did blush. So that is... Oh, and I have a tiny bit of my NYX HD Concealer in Yellow under the eye bag area, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So that's what I added. Okay, let's go over the rating system. So the first category is coverage performance. Does it provide the promised coverage? And for each category, I give the foundation a score of one through five. Okay, so for coverage, well, it doesn't provide or it doesn't promise a certain level of coverage. You know, it provides, it promises flawlessness, which kind of every foundation does. 
So I actually gave it a three because it it says it works like a concealer, and I don't think that's true at all. Um, to get a perfect full coverage, you do have to add that second layer, and I don't think that should be the case. Um, you know, it takes extra product and extra time. So that's a three for coverage. Okay, I have to look at my paper. That's why I'm looking down. Texture, or how does it feel on the skin? Um, is it a pleasant wearing experience? Okay, this does not feel like nothing. Some foundations, especially now, they're so good, they just feel like absolutely nothing, and I love that. This one, I feel it, but it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> so, so it's not drying, which is fantastic. I have very dry skin. It's not drying. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to move around. It's, I can just feel it. It's almost like I kind of stuck a layer on my skin, but it's not entirely unpleasant. Um, maybe, you know, you have to wear it to know what I mean, I guess. But I gave it, I gave it a four for that, for texture and how it feels. The next category is longevity. Um, does it provide, does it wear well for a reasonable amount of time? All right. So this foundation does wear very well. I've had it on all day and at night I think I can, I think I still look good. I can still see it and you know sometimes you don't necessarily want to see foundation but this is a fuller coverage foundation and I can still see it on it looks even it feels nice and I, I do think it has a really good wear time so I gave that a five packaging okay this is a luxury foundation obviously it's Givenchy it costs forty eight dollars for point zero eight ounces by the way and it comes in, I don't have it, I use a sample, but it comes in a glass bottle with a pump. So the pump is fantastic, but the glass bottle is, you know, very luxurious and heavy with a, a big cap with the Givenchy logo in gold. It's very beautiful, but I, the, I would rather have something a little less beautiful and a little more functional because I would never want to travel with that bottle. So uh, for packaging, I gave it a 4.5. Price or is it worth the money is it what do you is it, you're getting reasonable value for your money so like I said it's forty eight dollars but to me it's just like a kick in the face that they can't give me a full ounce what is up with that point eight ounces I, I might have said point zero eight before if that was wrong it's point eight ounces the standard for foundation even luxury foundations is one ounce so that irritates the heck out of me <laughs> $48 is not a bad price point for a luxury foundation. That's actually the exact same price as the Marc Jacobs foundation and probably a, a slew of other ones as well come in right around that number. But I hate that I'm not getting kind of the full product. So I gave that a three. Um, it's a good foundation, but I, don't do that to me. Don't like cheat me out of product. So that's how I rate it. Now overall, would I recommend this to you? I say no. I can't really recommend this foundation. And one of the big reasons, and I definitely talked about a lot of drawbacks with it, but I think the biggest reason is that I don't find it to be super special. It didn't wow me. It didn't provide anything really unique. I think you could find what it gives you at all sorts of price points. Um, you know, it's a, it's a solid foundation. It feels good. It looks good. It's easy to apply. It has SPF if you want it to have SPF. It, there's nothing good about it for HD, photo, anything. That's, that's just marketing. It, it doesn't really make sense. So I can't recommend it because it's expensive and it's not special, I guess is what it kind of came down to, down to for me. I do enjoy wearing it. I think it looks pretty good, but in all honesty, I think other foundations look better. I have cheap ones that look better. I have expensive ones that look better for me, for my, for the way I want foundation to look. So that about wraps it up. I'm not totally sure what foundation to review next. I did get a sample of the Buxom, so if some of you are interested in seeing that, I will gladly do that. I have not tried it yet. And I have been told by some ladies, um, Cornelia and Sani, that I should try the Dolce & Gabbana foundation. So if you're interested in that, um, I do want to grab a sample because I hear that it, it's fantastic. Or if you have other requests, throw those out please in the comments and I'll see if that's something I can review. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time and have a wonderful day.